Good morning, family. So, this is Reading with Evie. And this is episode one of my docuseries where I am moving out of Louisiana. Officially, like yesterday, my parents came and helped me get all the rest of my furniture. And we picked up the keys. Well, dropped off the keys, really. And it was such an experience because, like, this is the first complex where you didn't have to, like, write a written notice. And so I just... Went into the leasing office and told them, hey, I want to turn in my keys early. I done paid my last payment. And the girls just accepted the keys. And I wrote a piece of paper saying I was leaving. And that was it. So I got all this stuff. Just like, for instance, mattress. Just chilling. Like, <laughs> I got pieces of my furniture just chilling around my parents' house right now. But this is the living room. It's nice and chocolate. I thought it was quite interesting when we first moved here that the living room is literally chocolate. And the the living room set is chocolate too. So definitely. Uh, let me go open, open these blinds here in the dining room so you guys can see. Oh, it's a little tight squeeze. There you go. I can see better, but yeah, behind me was my headboard, and this is my dresser. This is going to a nice family whenever they get a chance to come and get the furniture. But yes, I wanted to donate it because I've had it since I was, let's see, Hurricane Katrina happened in 2005. Yes, I'm originally from Louisiana, New Orleans, Louisiana, and then... They got that furniture from Olin, so it's like, you know, real oak wood and all that, real heavy. And I've had it for a very long time, and I feel like now that I am getting close to my 30s, I should make my own stamp on the furniture that I want. So that's initially what I'm going to do is buy new furniture when I get back to Texas this week. Um... Yeah, it's, it's been such a... I'm going to go sit in this rocking chair. My mother has a rocking chair. It's been such an interesting transitional period. This took five months in the making. I got the job offer in February, and I immediately just went out on faith and moved to Texas. And I've literally been back and forth ever since. And I have all of my stuff in a storage unit in Texas right now. And so I actually have a new apartment coming out. It'll be probably the next couple of episodes because this is technically the second video I'm recording. The first one is where I do a reflection upon my three months being a librarian, which I guess it hasn't really been five months. I don't know. I feel like it's been longer, but it probably hasn't. Yeah, I, I've recorded a video documenting my first three months into being a librarian and my thoughts and experience on that. And so that should be up once I edit the video. And so initially, this docu-series is just for me documenting my first year into becoming a librarian. But not only that, like I am moving out of state. Like, you know, many people who live in the South know what it's like to live these like lifestyles of it's such a grand place to visit but when you live there it's a whole different story and louisiana is one of those places where people love to come tour they love to come to all the events and whatnot but when you actually live here and realize what the job market is like and only certain job fields are actually going to benefit you then it's like yeah living here it's only if you're into a certain career field. Other than that, you <sighs> you may struggle pretty badly. And that's just being honest because uh, inflation has definitely affected the lifestyle. Like there used to be pretty cheap apartments you can get now. That's no longer the case. Uh, if you get a decent apartment, it's going to be in a troublesome neighborhood that that at a certain price. And to pay over a thousand dollars is really like what you would have to adjust to. And it's like you have to have a certain, you have to make a certain amount of money, not a certain job, a certain amount of money to be able to afford a one thousand one bedroom apartment. It it really does suck. That's why people go back and forth about living with roommates or living with parents. That constant debate. I've done both, <laughs> and honestly. 
there's much more peace living with roommates. If everyone gets along and does their part, then you won't really have any issues versus living with parents. They're all up on, all up on you about expectations, about what you should be doing with your life. So it's like, yeah, you get a little more freedom, but just not enough like space with roommates. Like I'm used to buying groceries in bulk. Because I'm a Sam Club member. Can't do that. Like, the last couple of months, I've had to adjust going grocery shopping, like, every week. Because I only have, like, a drawer in the refrigerator part and a drawer in the freezer part. And I try to buy as much food as I can. But I, I don't... I can't buy in bulk until I have my own place. And so... Initially, I am really blessed to be able to finally make this transition happen fully to where I... I no longer have an address in Louisiana. Like, <laughs> it's surreal because that was my first apartment. That's where I registered my first business, E.B. Rice Consulting, LLC. I had a writing consulting business where I help college students with essay writing. And the reason I closed it after a year is because it really did not go too well. Because mainly my biggest competition was writing centers on college campuses. So it's like, why would you go to an uh, independent person who's going to make you charge them to edit your essay when you could just go to one on the college campus and you probably won't have to pay anything. So it's an uphill battle. Like I still, I, I, I figure even though to me it wasn't that much of a financial gain, I would still write a book on the knowledge that I know and publish it for college students. So that way they'll have that template where you're getting advice from a writing major and I've made every mistake you can think of. Like I am not the perfect writer. I had to become the perfect writer. <laughs> like now it's like, if I make mistakes, I'll quickly like identify them and correct myself. I, I literally cannot go without without correcting my writing as I'm writing. I, I cannot go back and edit. Like I'll have to hire an editor if I'm if I made any more mistakes. Cause usually I edit while writing and that gets in the way of me being creative sometimes. But I definitely since I have closed that business, I want to be able to write a book about the knowledge I've gained on how to write the perfect essay. And so now they all like not only have I let go of an apartment, I've let go of a business, I've let go of family and friends, cause everybody was so shocked that I had just moved out of nowhere and I waited until I transferred my car and I got my new license before I told anyone. Cause you know, you have a vision for your life. And for me, I have a degree in libraries. And so I knew what I wanted, I knew what type of job title I wanted because I know with the job title it'll come with the responsibilities that I want to do which is working in archives and special collections and so no one around me understood what I was doing because no one works in the library so like the library world you have it's a gamble you really have to like put yourself out there networking but also put out as many job applications as you can because you never know who is hiring, what new job post is being uploaded every single day. And that's how I ended up landing this job because I just never stopped applying because I wanted to become a processing archivist. I wanted to help process collections. Like I went to school for this. I got another certification in this field so I could be able to do this type of work instead of just being a regular old librarian helping people gather information or recommend books. Like now I get to actually help preserve stories and help tell stories that people may not know about and uh preserve items for long periods of time like that's literally going to become my life for the next couple years until god moves me on to the next phase of my life but i'm pretty really excited about it because now i have a new business that still revolves around writing but i target it more towards like now i'm in um, a notary in the state of texas i am certified and i recently got my online certification and then my next step is to go into loan signing agency and so my new business is e rice llc and that one initially is going to be about the the notary business and like if people want to 
want to hire a writer to prepare documents, I'm going to do that. So it's like I am targeting myself more towards clients who need business, uh, need papers that, that, that needs to be crafted, like wills, deeds, um, power of attorney, and then I could turn around and notarize it. Like, do it all. I'm a one-stop one shop. And so that's initially what I'm doing with Evie Rice LLC in Texas. And so whenever I start gaining more clients, I plan on creating another separate business for the book publishing because I originally had Cupid Curls Press LLC here in Louisiana, but I closed it because I initially want to move everything to Texas for um, taxes reasons. It's more beneficial for me to have it in Texas. And I'd rather take my chances going that route versus here. It's, it's It really is a difference in where you register your business because every state has different laws. And it's just, things are just much easier to have it in Texas. So that's the initial one I'm probably going to do either by the end of the year or the beginning of next year. And that's just registering another business. So I'll have multiple businesses again. And now I have my own place. So I plan on getting better equipment to do podcasting and to do editing. Because making these videos, I've been watching YouTube for years. And I never really considered myself as a YouTuber. But it's like, I actually want to document this series. And it's like, why not post it online? You know, like <laughs> you get to know me, get to know my brand, knew, know who I am, because I'm much more than just an archivist and a librarian. I was first a poet and now I'm a notary. Like I hold so many titles and it's like I want clients to really get to know who I am so that they, they like they'll get a feel of who they are trusting with their documents trusting with their notarizations and also trusting with writing advice because I have over 10 years experience. Like I started out writing poetry. I'm taking every level of writing classes, like advanced writing. Even in college, I have a degree in creative writing and I took technical writing, professional writing, advanced poetry writing. Like I just kept going higher and higher and I still have all of my textbooks, all of my notes because I knew one day I was going to write a book about my knowledge and initially it might be and it might end up being a series but it's like I will establish myself in the publishing world one day yeah I, I am starting out with self-publishing but I will make my stamp because right now I've made my career in the library world and now I'm just gonna go forward with you know it's, it's, a, it's a secret project I'm working on so I will tell you guys when the time comes but it's initially going to skyrocket me. And that's pretty awesome. It's pretty awesome. I have even bigger plans than the original ones I had because the goals I had was to get to this point. It was to move out of state, find a better job, and be around better people and in a better environment. I've done those three things. Now I'm going higher because I'm definitely at a point in my life where I could have a stable friend group i could have a stable relationship because like my mind isn't where it used to be and and now when i meet new people i tell them what i've gone through but i also have told them i've taken 2022 literally last year to heal from everything that's why like recording this docuseries about me leaving my apartment has been hard because I didn't get a chance to enjoy it because I went through so much to get to that point. And then I was, I still wasn't happy because I was facing racism and never a day in my life I thought I would face racism. But you live in the South, it's, 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 a, it's a liable cause that it might happen. So and that's initially what happened to me. And it took me a while to wrap my head around what was going on, but I knew that I couldn't stay where I was. And I'm glad I kept fighting to get out of my situation because it was pretty bad. Like, I don't like being bullied on the job and it's not fair, especially as someone that is like motivated and wants to actually have a career, actually want to do something with their life. Other people get jealous. So gotta get away from those people. Don't don't attack back. I I fully believe in karma. 
I believe in karma. And karma come back quick these days. That's all I'm going to say. Like, don't get no revenge. Just do what you got to do to level up. Level up. That's my advice to anyone who's watching this video is to level up and to do what you want to do. Because there are people who make the sacrifices to get to where they want to go. Whether you want to work from home job, whether if you want to move out of state and get another job. It's all about making those sacrifices, but also being silent. Because not everybody's going to support your vision. And no one necessarily supported me. They didn't really know what I was doing because they didn't understand it, but I knew. And so I just made the moves and I told them afterwards when I got myself a little bit more stable somewhere else. And initially, today, I'm still now preparing to move into an actual one-bedroom apartment and like going out and getting furniture. And I have a breakfast bar, so I'm looking at bar stools. Um, I've, I've gotten a good amount of like decorations, like wall art, which I'm so excited. Whenever I do my apartment tour, I'm going to definitely show you guys because my kitchen looks amazing. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm looking into furniture now and then I have to, like, a, like, I feel like I said it in videos before where I have to get renter's insurance, I have to get lights, and I have to get Wi-Fi. So I'm hoping to get all those things done within the next two weeks before I get the keys to my new place. Because hopefully I'll be able to, like, we're going to cross our fingers, I can find a good bedroom set. Like, I'm not too much worried about having a living room set right now, just a, at least a bedroom set and a mattress. And I can literally create the aesthetic that I want so that when I do my podcasting, I'll, I'll, I'll record myself doing podcast episodes. And then on YouTube, I'll have like, like the, you know, the atmosphere of the really a gothic poet. Cause that's who I am at heart. And I always will be, but I'm pretty excited for what's coming up next and me having the courage to be able to record videos. So I'm so excited to bring you guys on my journey and being brave enough to be one of the first in my family to move out of state. So I'm hoping you guys will have the courage to do what you have to do for your mental health and for your happiness. See you on the next video.